guys! Today's video is all about the stories behind my rescue guinea pigs. So how they came to the rescue, how they were found, where we got them from, kind of the backstory of all the guinea pigs we've ever had. Some of these stories are nice, some are sad, but they all have a happy ending. I'm going to go in chronological order, so we'll start with our first guinea pigs and then move on to the current herd. Pebbles and little one. We got pebbles from someone we thought was rescuing guinea pigs, but who, looking back at it, wasn't really prepared for that task. We got to see a bunch of guinea pigs in an enclosure. Pebbles immediately stood out to us as she was trying to get human attention and instead of hiding, weaked and wanted to sniff our hands. Pebbles' story is kind of sad because her mom was a pet store pig which either already came to a family pregnant or they got what they believed to be two female guinea pigs who were actually male and female. In any case, Pebbles and a bunch of other babies surprised the family and they ended up at the rescue. The family hadn't separated male and female pups early enough though, and so Pebbles came to our house as a baby guinea pig who was pregnant. Pebbles was way too young to be a pregnant guinea pig and we never got her to gain weight. She always stayed small and tiny. We've had other small guinea pigs, like Little One and Nugget, but they've at least managed to put on weight. Guinea pigs shouldn't have babies before they are 6 months old, and so I always wondered whether Pebbles stayed small because she got pregnant way too young. In any case, Pebbles lived a very happy life with us and we kept her one guinea pig pup, Little One, so she always lived with family. Little One got neutered very early, so the cycle of uncontrolled breeding was broken. Frida Frida came to us by falling out of a tree trunk. We got her from the same place we got Pebbles from and the person just tipped over a big tree trunk and four or five identical looking guinea pigs fell out. Frida came from a horrible mass breeding place and remained a scared guinea pig for the first couple of years. Ironically, it took two surgeries on her jaw where we had to clean her wounds three times a day to make her trust us. Frida was the most scared guinea pig we've ever had and she was always scared to go hungry. I know that we say that jokingly about all guinea pigs but Frida really had to learn that there was enough food for everyone. When little one was born, she bit him and tried to chase him away from any food we put in the cage. It took her a couple of months to realize that she would never have to go hungry. Frida also made purring sounds while eating and it's like she had to show her appreciation for food all the time. But Frida eventually learned that there was just always enough food for everyone and she was a very happy guinea pig who lived a very good life. Frida just loved eating and she took the crown for heaviest guinea pig we've ever had. Sylvester Sylvester was discovered inside a cardboard box outside of a fire station. He was in the box with two other guinea pigs and they had hay but no water. The fireman took them to a rescue close to my parents' house, put a photo of him on the rescue's website and that's how I found him. He was outside the fire station for close to 12 hours, so quite a long time. The rescue later told us that while of course it is horrible to put guinea pigs inside a cardboard box and just leave them outside a building, the guinea pigs were all neutered and healthy. So it appeared like someone had been taking good care of them in the sense that their nails were cut, their fur was clean, they weren't underweight or malnourished, someone had obviously paid for the neutering and the vet later gave them a clean bill of health. They thought that maybe the previous owner had passed away or wasn't able to take care of them anymore health-wise and someone else arranged for the guinea pigs to be taken away because maybe the owner wasn't able to do this anymore. Sylvester's backstory is extremely sad, so I just want to point out that after the story he lived in a herd of five guinea pigs for six more years, was never sick and had the most amazing time with his guinea pig friends and his hay. It took us a year to find the perfect hay blend for our little hay connoisseur and once we found it, Sylvester had truly found his heaven on earth. He went on to have a forever home for another six years and he was very, very happy. Nugget Nugget also has a background story you hear often. 
Her mom was bought from a breeder and ended up giving birth to Nugget and her brother at their new owner's home. Since the new owners only wanted two guinea pigs, Nugget ended up at our place. Something that I don't think I've ever shared about Nugget's life before us is that her brother is a rich bag guinea pig and looks like Gatsby, so he has this little dinosaur rich on his bag. He was adopted by someone else while we got Nugget. Lulu Lulu was adopted as a baby from the same rescue that Sylvester came from. She was rescued from someone who called themselves a breeder, but who became completely overwhelmed with the task of caring for their guinea pigs. This is unfortunately a story that you hear often. People think they can easily breed guinea pigs, but then don't separate males and females fast enough and the situation turns into mass breeding, where the owner completely loses track of which guinea pigs are pregnant, which are male and which are female, which just had babies and how many. This person ended up with over 50 guinea pigs before realizing that this just wasn't working out anymore. There were so many guinea pigs that they had to split them between different rescues. Many of them had developed fungal infections and mites because the owner was just simply not able to take care of them anymore. Many of the females ended up having more babies at the rescue. So while Lulu's backstory is also very sad, she was also very young when my mom adopted her and she was the happiest little baby guinea pig who now turned into a grown guinea pig who lives in our herd after her guinea pig partner passed away. Lulu has always been spoiled with veggies for her entire life and I don't think this is ever going to stop. So this story also has a happy ending. Wilma, Minnie, Gatsby, Lumi and Max. These five are from the same rescue near our house. Since their stories are similar, they're all in one group and they're at the end of this video because their story is actually really nice. All of them came to the rescue as well taken care of piggies and none of them have a really bad background story. The rescue told us that they're currently seeing less and less neglected and abandoned guinea pigs and instead see more people who are responsible and take care of their guinea pigs until they can't and then immediately find a rescue to bring them to. This is often the case when one of the last remaining guinea pigs passes away and only one guinea pig is left and the owners know that they don't want to keep on getting new guinea pigs. So they either bring their remaining guinea pig to the rescue so that it doesn't have to be on their own or borrow a partner pig which goes back to the rescue once it's on its own again. Usually a guinea pig is only a borrowed partner guinea pig once and then goes on to their forever home. These were my guinea pigs rescue stories. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you guys next time. Bye!